Hey, Terry Caliendo from Dedicated Managers here again. I wanted to show how to um, create a Firestore timestamp object from a, um, a, a JavaScript date object. Uh, it's pretty simple. Just figured I'd throw it out there uh, and, and just make sure that it's, it's obviously seen um, in case anybody comes across this video and, wants, and, and needs help. So basically, um, what I do in my app here, so my app is importing um, some data from a file, where I'm importing the old database into a new database. So I'm creating a date, a new JavaScript date object, that's what this is right here, from a variable. And this variable is just going to simply um, have the format of, of dates like this, where it's the year, month, um, and then the day. And that makes things actually really simple for me in that I can um, create a new date from that format. If we take a look at uh, JavaScript, the developer, uh, and you just look up the you know um, JavaScript date uh, reference, and right here you see you can create a date from um, year, month, day, and then you just add the time on to it, and I just add a time of zero, so it's right at um, the start of the day. And um, we can actually, you know, log that out to see uh, if we get rid of this other one. And you'll see that that creates a date. Um, so if I was to take, uh, you know, this date, 2018, 10, 10, and I was to put that in there, uh, I'll just leave the time the same and I run it. Oh, I get an invalid date because there's a space there run it. So there it gives me the date object and I'm just console logging the date object. So um, all I'm doing is this is my variable that I'm bringing in from my import file. That's what it's going to look like. So I'm just tacking on the time element to it in my code. So if you take a look at the code here, that's what I'm doing here. This is that first number that I showed you and then I'm just adding on, I'm concatenating, uh, you know, a time to it. I put that in a, I create a date out of that. I stick that in a variable and I'm going to give that variable to the Firestore um, uh, timestamp class, uh, which allows me the, to, to give it a from date when I instantiate it or when I, um, I think that's instantiation of the, the class uh, or it's a static thing. Um, and you can find that on um, Firebase's timestamp. It's not super intuitive to find. Uh, if you search for start Firestore timestamp, for me, it might be because I'm logged in that and that's what comes up. I had a tough time finding it before. Um, but this is the documentation for it, and you can see that there is a from date method, um, that, uh, a static constructor method, that allows you to give it a date and it returns a Firestore timestamp object um, from that. So if, if you're uh, struggling to find uh, this documentation, it is kind of buried. Uh, if you start from, you know, if you start from the Firebase documentation, so if I'm, I'm in the Firebase documentation, basic JavaScript, the reference section, uh, or if I, let's see if I just start from Firebase, no, let me get to the reference section, the documentation. If you say you're in the overview here, um, you click to the reference, and for some reason I always start on Android, but you want to be in JavaScript. You want to find the Firestore, and then it's tucked away in this overview section as one of the classes, and here it is here as, a time, as the timestamp object. Um, so that's how to, to navigate to it directly. You click on that and that brings up the, the documentation. I don't see any other way to get there. I just, um, you know, if the search doesn't show up, it, it's, it's tough to find. So hopefully that helps you get there. Um, so anyway, um, back to what I was talking about. So, um, you know, that, that is this right here. Um, and then the from date is the method that we're going to use from that documentation. And we just put our JavaScript date in there and that returns us a uh, Firestore timestamp that allows us to um, you know, insert that time step into the database. And so here I just log out the different things that I'm doing. Um, you know, each step, the, it starts as a string from the import file. That's you know, this thing right here. Uh, and then I, I turn it into a, JS, a JavaScript date. That's this line here. And then um, I show a, the, the timestamp 
which is where I create the timestamp here with the, the new operator. So that's why we're seeing um, on the output, um, I'm console logging those three things. So here's the string. This is what I'm bringing in. I'm adding that T thing to it. I'm submitting it to create a JavaScript date. That gives me this thing, um, which it prints out as a string when I um, console log it. Doesn't show the exact object, but I feed that object into the Firestore uh, timestamp class and it creates a Firestore timestamp. And now I can submit this variable to the database and uh, the database will store it as a timestamp. So that's how you create it locally. If you're not using the server and you want to, you want to give it a specific time uh, to create the timestamp um, for your data. So hopefully that was helpful. Again, Terry Caliendo of dedicatedmanagers.com. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, if that was helpful, please leave a comment. Follow me, subscribe on, uh, on YouTube. These videos would appreciate it. Um, again, have a great day and happy coding.